Well, hi, um, my name is Jerry Coyne, and I'm an evolutionary biologist at the University of Chicago. I've been teaching evolution for about 30 years now, and I realized um, after several decades of this that there was no popular book on the evidence for evolution. Everybody learns about evolution, but they don't learn why exactly we think it's true. So I actually wrote this book in order to provide people with the evidence for several reasons. First of all, because evolution is been described as the best idea anybody's ever had. It's one of the supreme intellectual achievements of uh, human beings, and yet uh, very few people know A, what it is, and B, what the evidence is that makes us realize that evolution is more than a theory, but it's true. So that evidence is varied and multif multifarious and magnificent. It's just wonderful, and it's really nice to hear about it, so I thought a popular treatment might be useful for people. In addition, um, in the United States and also in the UK, there's this creeping opposition to evolution known as creationism. And part of the reason I wrote this book was to provide people with the ammunition that they need to combat this um, form of uh, anti-evolution. And also, if they already accept evolution, to give them the evidence they need or the ammunition they need to defend their views. So that's the other reason. Uh, what's in the book, it's not only a popular exposition of what evolution is, and it's more than just one thing. It's actually, as I show, a group of different kinds of theories, all of which I give evidence for. But the evidence is drawn from a variety of areas in biology, not just the fossil record, which is important, but also things like embryology, um, vestigial organs, for example, humans have muscles that move their ears that don't really do us any good, but they're the remnants of muscles that um, are useful in our relatives like cats and dogs to detect sound. And Well, I'll demonstrate that right now. Maybe you can see these ears moving. So that's of no use to us, but it's very useful for your cat to locate sounds. We have the evolutionary remnants of that trait. So that's more evidence for evolution. We have bad design. The muscles that I use when I speak are innervated by a nerve that starts here, but instead of going from here to here, it goes here all the way down around the heart and back again. So that's bad design, and it makes no sense, except if you understand how that nerve evolved in the first place. And finally, there's biogeography, the distribution of plants and animals on the surface of the planet, um, which testifies to evolution in a way that um, is also extremely interesting and compelling. So those are the reasons I wrote the book. And again, the book is meant to show, give people a lesson in scientific thinking, how to adjudicate evidence, how to look at the world and see, yes, all this stuff fits together into the theory of evolution. And it's also, um, again, evolution is a topic that if you consider yourself an educated person, you'd want to know something about it. It's like foreign arts and literature. It's one of the supreme achievements of the human mind. And I think that if you don't know anything about evolution or about the evidence for evolution, then you're really the poorer for it.